I'm on the water today to do a tour of my Haynes Hunter 680 Encore. I'm going to basically run through everything that it's got, uh, what works, and, and what also doesn't work. Where do I begin? I see the hate, they don't want to see me win. Bank the pilots, I got more coming in. Top down, throw the money in the wind. I don't want it all. Heard these scammer, I had to switch up the accounts. Moving paper, gotta call it my account. It's all in, I can have it coming now. Yeah, it's not a we'll go down the back and start with the best spot possible and that is the motor so it's a 2022 Yamaha 300 uh, I didn't end up going I didn't end up going electric steering I went mechanical steering uh, I went mechanical steering with mercury power steering assist so I'll show you that box in the in the in the back here but it basically it's basically still hydraulic steering but it has a, it has, it has a power assist so it just makes that steering a little bit easier uh, I was gonna go the electric steering in the Yami but um, just the hardest of getting motors my motor I had a white one on order and it just took so long to get here so I ended up swapping out and uh, and going for the mechanical steering but let's uh, Let's run through that a bit more in a sec and take it for a ride and we'll show you what happens. All right, so let's have a yarn about the motor. So at the moment, I'm just cruising 25 knots. Uh, that's sitting at 3,700 RPM, burning 35 litres an hour, uh, 1.3 K per litre. And it's obviously pretty calm, the water. So that's just sort of cruising. Uh, most of the time, I probably find myself sitting on 30. So we'll wind it up to 30. And uh, that's how I would normally cruise around, uh, if the weather permits. Often or not, it doesn't. But that's uh, wound up now about 29, 30 knots. Uh, that's sitting at 4,300 RPM and burning 54 litres an hour. 1.1 kilometre per litre. So that's how I'd probably normally sit. Uh, that's just cruising. Uh, top speed I've had up to around 44 knots on the river. Right now, I'm, I'm not quite sure. It's actually a little bit of chop in the water now, but um, yeah, let's uh, let's wind it up, I reckon. There is a bit of chop. Here we go. Woo! That's our uh, wound up. That is sending, boy. That's uh, just shy of 40 knots, 5,000 RPM, and uh, 100 liters an hour. Yeah, boy. 100 liters an hour. I might not cruise for this for too long, eh? Yeah. Well, she's falling over. So that's a few fuel stats for you. Obviously, I'm not sitting at 40 knots too often. Oh, my Esky's just sent it. The whole boat's just sent it. Got a bit of air there. But uh, that's, some, that's some sort of stats for you. Uh, yeah, most of the time just cruising at sort of that 25 knots and uh, sitting at like 35 to 40 litres per hour. Sounding up, I run a Furuno 295. Uh, that's paired with an SS175 HW and an 82B 35R. I've got that on a fairing block in the centre, basically in the keel of the uh, keel of the boat. Um, it, it reads pretty good, but I've seen definitely boats that read better, so I wouldn't so I wouldn't say uh, it doesn't hold bottom at 40 knots, put it that way. But uh, it, it gets me out of trouble, and it sounds up it sounds up fish while I'm marlin fishing, so that's that's my main my main objective. Uh, moving on from there, I got two Simrads. I got a Simrad Evo 3 12 inch and just a Simrad Go 7. So I use the, the 12 for all my navigation. Uh, I've also got Autopilot, uh, absolutely game changer. That's with the new 300. Box is behind there and it's all wired through the Simrad. I've also got my music in there, uh, JL Audio. Oh, so I'll run through, I'll show you that as well. That's an MM, I think it's an MM105 or an MM100, but that's integrated through the Simrad as well, so I can change all the music, and, and basically all I want for that is just volume up and down. When shit starts getting hectic, I want to be able to turn it off. I use the Simrad Go 
Uh, not a lot. I basically just have the tides up on there for most days, so I'm always keeping my eye on the tides. And I'll do a little bit of navigation, but I don't really use it that much. I don't have radar or anything like that, so the, the second screen doesn't really get used a lot. So quad lock for the phone. I'm always just running my tunes through the phone. Uh, and it just sits there charging all day. So that's that's definitely a go-to. Also using rip charts out while marlin fishing, it's good to just have that overlay right there so you know where you are and, and, you, and you're watching the whole time. So Simrad radio and my control panel there and my Yamaha screen, that's got all my fuel displays, fuel tank and what I've been using uh, so far. It's just been dead accurate, like to the nearest liter. So that's been absolutely amazing. Uh, I have a 600 liter tank uh, we can run through that a bit later. So 600 litres, I'm absolutely juiced up. Uh, but yeah, and being able to narrow down exactly what I'm using is absolutely key for me. On my last motor, uh, I used Simrad fuel flow sensors and stuff like that, and I just I couldn't narrow down like how much fuel I was using and how much I had left. So I was always coming, uh, you know, you don't want to push the limits, but you also want to know exactly what you've got. And often you, you're coming home early with fuel, but you've still got heaps of fuel left. You just don't know what, you're, what I was using. Whereas now, with this new setup, I know exactly what I'm using to the nearest leader. So that is absolutely perfect. Uh, also on here is the Zip Wakes, uh, an awesome piece of kit for your boat. Without the zip wakes, this boat does handle like shit. It always wants to fly out of the water, but with the zip wakes running, it just holds in and, it, and it, just, it just doesn't fly out of the water. It just holds in the water, it's perfect. The only problem is I've had heaps of problems with zip wakes disconnecting, and right as we speak, they're disconnected. So I'm constantly turning them on and off to, to get them connected again. I need to get it sorted out. Uh, I had the problem sorted for a while, but it looks like it's come back again. So that is the only downside, like, yeah, they're a great unit, but like, I'll be honest with you, yeah, I've had a few problems. I've had to replace the interceptors, and now I've got the same problem again. It's just not connecting. But uh, yeah, that's boat life, I guess. So this has got to be one of my favorite and least favorite parts of the boat. It's a, it, it is an awesome item. This is a 200 liter fridge. So a fridge seat, multitask. So here, as we open, look at show you inside there. So I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this thing. It's absolutely awesome, a 200 litre fridge. Basically what I would do, so what I do is I have one side I put frozen bottles in and the other side I leave as a fridge. Uh, when I'm at, at sea for an extended period of time, the one side will stay frozen. So now I have a few frozen blocks for ice. So as my ice melts in my esky, I can replenish it with frozen blocks from the freezer. So yeah, one side will act as a freezer, one side acts as a fridge. It's an absolutely awesome bit of kit. The only problem is it's reliant on a compressor that is a little bit tedious part. Like if it gets damaged, it's, it's, you can't just, re you have to replace the whole thing basically. Like, um, so if I was to do it again, I, I don't know if I would use it. Like I'd probably just use two angles and that way if I had a problem, I'd just throw the angle out and buy a new one. Whereas now with this, if I have a problem with it out at sea, like I can't, it can't be fixed. The compressor can't be fixed. It needs to be done back in, in town. And uh, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a big one for me. Uh, I've already been through one compressor before. Like basically the tubing gets broken and you, you, you almost can't repair it. It gets contaminated in there and it's just so hard to repair that it's just cheaper to buy a whole new unit. But uh, yeah, buying a whole new unit isn't the cheapest. I'll show you inside the cab and we'll show you where the compressor's stored. Okay, so we have fridge compressor, my favorite part of the boat, the coffee machine. That's the autopilot, 1200 inverter. And before we start talking about this too much, let's go out of the boat and into this side pocket here. In here, we've got 200 amp hour lithium battery, DC DC charger. And that is also wired to a solar panel, which I've got up here. Show you guys. Yeah, so we've got power for days, but before we go too far, let's use the best part of the boat, the coffee machine. And this is by far my favorite part of the boat, the coffee machine. Anyone who knows me knows I love caffeine. And bang, coffee machine on the boat. Machine froths me out. Woo! Caffeine, less oge. So the cab on a Hain 680, it is pretty bloody big and, uh, and I bloody love it because I'm always sleeping in here. So I sleep on this side 
and that side I've taken out the cushions and I basically put in a box of my snacks and then I either have my drone or my dive bag there. And then so under all that, I've got a first aid kit and I've got all my tools in there as well. So I always run a full set of tools. And up on that side, we've got all my safety gear, flares, life jackets, etc., etc. And under this side is that's where I just keep all my sleeping gear and my cooking gear. I leave all the cooking gear on the boat because I'm always cooking snacks. And, uh, and if the sleeping gear's on there as well, if I want to stay out the night, I, I don't have to worry about coming home to get gear. I just, it's just there. I can just stay out whenever I want. And then we got this side of the electronics as well. I'll show you this. I've got the Media Master 50. I told you guys it was 100, but it's actually a 50, my bad. I uh, keep that in here so it's just out of the weather and it's all integrated through the Simrad or my mobile phone, so I don't need it out there. A uh, couple of um, power points for, for 12 volt and then a heap of switches that I've got that for lights and stuff that I just don't need all the time. Once again, like I just, I keep it in here because it's just out of the wind, out of the rain, out of the swell and seas and salt and basically everything that's outside there just gets carnage when I'm in the rough. So I keep it in here and it just stays dry. Two kill tanks on either side. I bleed all my fish in there and then straight into the esky. That one I use for storage. Uh, heap of rod holders down the side. Straight down the center here is where the 600 liter fuel tank is. And on the sides, we've got two JL audio speakers. Yeah, rod holders down the side there. They're a bit of a game changer. Great for traveling. You go to the cab, it is stainless steel with clears and a windscreen. It, oh my God, just found another crack. Boats, they'll literally be the death of me. So basically the problem with my, with my cab at the moment is Stainless steel is just constantly cracking. I'm always re-welding it up. Uh, it's just too much pressure on it, probably because of these as well. Got Bellmarine Viper outrigger bases. Um, yeah, heavy outriggers. It's cracking the cab, but uh, the yeah, Blue Marlin takes priority, so let's just send it anyway. Uh, but the next plan is to build a hard top for it, uh, get rid of this completely, and build something that's completely waterproof. Uh, so at the moment it's clears with a windscreen and water does get in so also I have This here this extended sunshade um, I was gonna get rid of it I was gonna get rid of it because uh, I'm only like when you're getting photos of fish and that it blocks out a lot of the Sun the photos look like shit but um, It's not so much the shade it provides. It's more the water protection So when it's really rough and I'm marlin fishing waves crash over the top of the cab and then all the water runs down the back here. So if I was to get rid of that, then water, I'll show you, water would be basically running down here and the guy sitting here would be getting completely wet. So yeah, that's why I've decided to leave it on. And when I build the new hard top, I'll be going with the extendable as well. Um, it's for me, it's a must have, uh, must have bit of kit. So up the front, we've got Lone Star electric winch. Absolute game changer for the anchor. No more pulling anchors. Those days are done. So with the hull, basically it'll punch through any seas, any chop. Uh, up north, I can go out marlin fishing in basically any conditions. Uh, never really feel unsafe in the boat. It, it, um, the cab is dry, but the rest of the boat's pretty wet. So if the seas do get pumping, like the deck will get flooded, waves will hit, and they, and they will, will, um, will flood the deck. But uh, basically, I know that I can almost get home in any seas. Um, it'll sit on, you know, rough as shit. I'll still sit on 15, 20 knots coming home. So uh, I can really extend those weather windows. I can stay out on the grounds um, until it blows up. If I'm marlin fishing, I'll just stay out all day regardless. But if I'm bottom fishing, I'll, uh, I can really stay out on the grounds until it blows up. And then I know I can just drive home in that chop and uh, I'd never really have a problem. As I say, the cab's completely dry, but uh, yeah, the outside of the boat, uh, you know, the, the, the sides does get wet. It's got super high sides, which is great. Uh, you feel, feel pretty safe. The only downside is it's, it is hard to touch the water, so sometimes grabbing billfish and that, it's hard to lean over. Even bottom fish, when you go to pick them up out of the water, like it is pretty far to, to the waterline there. Uh, that would probably be only one downside. Uh, the dive door at the back on the transom, that's like all the time. We use that all the time. I'd much prefer that than a side door. So that's definitely one good point about the boat. Like I love it being a walk around. I'm always at the front. Uh, being solo, I do a lot of solo fishing. I can launch and retrieve easily by the front. I can walk up to the front to deal with anchors, whatever I need to. 
And uh, yeah, so I do love the walk around. Even when uh, we're sleeping two guys on the boat, I'll take the cab, one guy takes the deck, and uh, when I, you know, if one guy wakes up earlier in the morning, like I've got the whole front of the boat, I can open the cab and I can walk out on the front deck there and, and I don't have to wake the other guy up on the, on the deck there. So that's uh, definitely one bit. I love the walk around. The cab's pretty far back on the boat and it does have a huge cab. So that's why it probably rides so good and it feels so good is because the cab is far back. But the downside to that is the deck space. Like it doesn't actually have a big deck space. Um, overnighters, I only really run two guys. Um, if I'm going bottom fishing for the day, I'll take three out. And it is a three person boat, but, and marlin fishing. Marlin fishing, three people, no worries. But uh, for those extended overnight trips, yeah, I normally just take two guys and, uh, and that seems to be enough really. Eva flooring. So, as you can see, it is slightly thrashed. Let's have a rundown on that. So it's Eva decking, Eva flooring. It's awesome on your feet. Like I don't have to wear shoes. It's bloody awesome. But it just started, it, probably over the last, year, uh, the last six months, it just started peeling up. Uh, I've had it for over three years. And at the start, I was really careful with it, but it still started peeling up anyway. Uh, but over the last year, I've just sort of thrashed it. And um, yeah, it's really starting to come up now. Uh, I would buy it again purely because of how good it is on your feet. But yeah, it does start looking tacky after a while. Um, and I'm not really even sure. Like there's just these, oh, there's one, like little pieces of it. It's just like constantly breaking off. Um, so I'm not sure if any of the other companies use like different material or whether they use the same Eva decking. Uh, I'm not quite sure on that one, but I will be getting it redone. So if any of you guys know like a better solution, uh, hit me up in the comments below and we'll go from there because I, I probably will get it redone eventually so it looks a little bit cleaner. Name Aftermath. Uh, this boat was originally from Queensland and it actually came off the trailer. There was a bit of an incident where a car pulled out in front of another car and, and this boat ended up on the road. So uh, absolute carnage. Uh, boat builder Jack McKenzie, who runs Finesse Marine, bought it as his own boat to do up as his own boat. But basically, almost at the end of the build, uh, he decided that he wanted to go a different direction and build a Bertram 30. So he um, I ended up somehow got hold of him over there and ended up buying the boat and, and he completed the build in, in the way that I, I wanted it. We customized a few things and got it to how, how slightly how it is today. I obviously carried on a lot more of the work. But um, yeah, Aftermath baby, that's where the name comes from. So I'm just gonna do this zero to 30 knot challenge that Emission uh, Fishing Apparel's challenged me to. So what it is, is it's a rolling start, one or two knots, and uh, time how long it gets to, to 30 knots. So I've got it on a film so, for me, so I'm gonna um, have a crack like this and, yeah, let's do it, man. Right. Two knots there, let's go. I'm not sure if it's going to 30 or 40, but uh, yeah, I just went to 40 just to be safe, you know? 30 knot challenge, 40 knot challenge, let's go. One of the absolute game changers with the new motor has been autopilot. It's like, it's so bloody good. If I ever build another boat, it would 100% have it. I'll run through just how easy it is. So it's all fully integrated with the Simrad. Hit autopilot and just engage. Bang, and now we're, uh, we'll just head that same line. So it's it's so good, man. Like it allows you to work on your boat, do other stuff, rigging, whatever, have lunch, whatever you want to do. And uh, someone else is driving the boat. Now, it also works great with marlin fishing. Hold your line, it's so good. I can be down the back, working with the boys, set up the spread. I don't have to be on the wheel 24 seven. Um, so the other good feature, we're just cruising. If I want to change my direction, bang, plus 10, and it'll automatically go 10 degrees the other way. So, it's pretty good. You can also just hit any spot on the sounder and that'll say your heading number and you just type that in and bang, autopilot will take you straight there. Or hit a mark, press a mark and say go to and it'll just take you straight to it. So, absolute awesome bit of kit. Uh, money well spent on that. Speed assist. So it's a button on the side of the control there and it's just for like real finesse increments. So sometimes when you're, you're in the rough, and you want to wind your throttle down a bit, you know, you, you hit the throttle back, but it just takes off too much speed. 
with this, we'll just wind it up now. You press down, that engages it. I'm sitting on 3700 RPM, and if I want to back it off, I just click down on that, so bang down to 36. It's just a bit more control, rather than having to adjust the accelerator, but I noticed, yeah, when I'm cruising in the rough, it made such a difference. I, I didn't have to use the accelerator as much, and just, uh, just using that button, real finesse control. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. Um, I hope you like what you saw, and I hope I explained everything the best as I could. Uh, if you've got any other questions about the rig, Hit me up in the comments, drop a comment down below and uh, I'll answer it the best I can. So till next time, see you then.